You've got sidechain compression, multiband compression, and then this beautiful plugin, the FabFilter Pro MB right here, which is gonna help us deal with muddy low frequencies, non-existing kicks, and generally bad bass. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Fabio from Noise here at Boombox, the home of collaboration. Now this video wouldn't be possible without you amazing Boombox users submitting your tracks to me via the Boombox platform. I asked you for wet stems, a rough demo mix, and some notes and feedback on your track. Every month we are doing a competition in which you can win a free mix and or master from me. And this month, the tracks were so good, I decided to pick three of you to win. The first track we're gonna focus on is Let Go by Cameron Theus, and this is his rough mix. As you can see here in Boombox, Cameron has added feedback to his track with exactly what issues he was having and he wanted me to fix. But in this video, we're gonna be focusing on how to mix low end with the FabFilter Pro MB and sidechain compression. Here are the bass and kick together. Now, before we do any side chaining, I needed to create a four to the floor ghost kick because the kick pattern goes like this. Now, I don't want any additional rhythm other than a four to the floor. So I've duplicated and looped and created this ghost kick. But then I've muted it because it's just acting as a signal. I don't want it to add any volume or layer the original kick. The first thing I'm gonna do is feed in that ghost kick signal. Then I'm gonna create a really large band like this. I'm gonna to go to expert immediately and make sure that we are feeding in that external signal by clicking here. Then we're gonna do a fast attack. We'll leave the release where it is for now, increase the ratio all the way up, and we're also gonna turn the look ahead to 20 milliseconds. Let's also bring the range all the way down. And now all we have to do is adjust the threshold to decide how much of the kick we want to affect this compressor so that it ducks in volume every time the kick is playing. Now this is great, but currently the FabFilter Pro MB is reacting to all of the kick signal. What I mean is from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. What if I were to get the compressor just to react to the clicky part of the signal to make a sharper, tighter, and more accurate sidechain? So I'm gonna go over to free, and then you'll notice that we get this band that we can move, and this is the band of frequencies that it's letting into the compressor from the kick. I'm gonna go ahead and unsolo my kick and hit audition here so you can understand what I mean. So by enabling free, we can decide which frequencies the compressor is reacting to from the sidechain kick signal. When it's a tighter, clickier sound, all of a sudden that gives us a lot more control because the click is much shorter and tighter than the low end. Here's what it sounds like in the mix. So whether you're looking for something more surgical or more pumpy, this gives you some advanced options. The next track we're gonna use is OY by Stove. So from Boombox, I'm able to select all the files and then download them into a zip file directly onto my computer, where I can then add them to a DAW of my choice. Let's listen to the kick and bass. Now in Stove's track, one of the things I don't want to do is have the entire bass pumping. I just want the low end of the bass to duck every time the kick plays because the mids and the highs are providing us with this nice distorted information. There's no need for a ghost kick this time around, so I'm just going to feed in the kick into the side chain input, and then I'm going to do a low shelf here. Let's go to expert change this to external so it's feeding in the side chain signal and then we're going to do same again fast attack we'll leave the release where it is ratio all the way up look ahead all the way up 
And let's bring that range all the way down. Let's extend this ever so slightly. And then what we're gonna do is decrease the threshold until we have the right amount of compression. With a multi back compressor, we can just get the low frequencies to duck out of the way, leaving the mid and highs intact, which can be a great approach to keeping a balanced mix. But just like with our last example, it's reacting a little too heavily to the low frequencies of the kick, making it not as tight as I'd like it to be. So I'm going to hit free so we can control which frequencies from the kick are entering the compressor. I'm going to press audition and we're going to play around. Now from here, what I can do is adjust the release depending on how much of that pump I want. Do I want it short and tight or do I want it long and smooth? Let's have a listen with and without. Now there's way more space for the low end in a natural sounding way. Lastly, I was faced with this very tricky master where the kick was almost inaudible at times and the track generally needed a lot of multiband compression in order for it to feel balanced across the mix. I know we're focusing on low end, but here's a bonus tip. I did use the Pro MB to control the high frequencies. There's no side chain going on here. This is directly on and reacting to the source signal. What's with perfection? It's a deception only so quit your mess and then you're better off resting from the cerebral infection. Those hats just needed some taming. The kick feels too dynamic in this track. In fact, sometimes it's barely audible. So I wanted to find a way to use the Pro MB to bring it out of the mix. So I started by creating a point around 120 and then just by stroking on my mouse with two fingers, I can actually increase and decrease these slopes here to 48 decibels. So making this nice and sharp, and I'm gonna make this as thin as possible. I'm then gonna solo it, and I'm gonna move it around until I can find where my kick is most dominant. So here at 64, we can really hear the kick coming through. Now, instead of compressing downwards, I'm actually gonna expand. What this means is when the kick signal or whatever signal is there crosses the threshold, rather than it being pushed down in volume, it's actually increased in volume. So I'm gonna to go to expand. I'm gonna increase the range. So it's going the opposite way. I'm gonna do a fast attack and a fast release. And I'm gonna make the knee hard so that the signal affects the compressor in a more immediate and aggressive way. Let's hear that in the mix. The kick is more audible, but it's not balanced with the sub and bass. So I'm gonna do some rather extreme multi-band compression without a side chain here to bring the two up and add more sustain to help it feel warmer and match the rest of the vibe of the track. So first of all, I'm going to do a low cut. We're gonna make this range really, really big because we're gonna do a lot of compression here. And we're gonna leave the attack and release setting as they are for now and we're just gonna adjust the threshold so we're overdoing the compression. Now using the output, we're gonna increase the volume of this frequency area that we're compressing. Let's solo and listen to what's going on.
Now by increasing and decreasing the attack, we can decide if we want more punch or more glue. The medium attack sounds most natural. Let's listen in context. Here's the track before and after the different instances of multiband compression. So there you have it, become a master at mixing learned with the FabFilter Pro MB. Don't forget to follow Boombox on Instagram. Link is in the description below. I'm Noise London. Thank you for joining us at the home of collaboration and I'll see you very soon. Peace.